Mike McDaniel coached the Miami Dolphins to victory in his first ever game as a head coach. His squad took down the Bill Belichick-led New England Patriots 20-7 to open the season. McDaniel, who spent the last 11 seasons in various assistant coach roles for four different teams, clued everyone into one key difference between being an assistant coach and a head coach. He said that it's easier to get away with not showering as an assistant. It suffices to say that McDaniel had a way easier time laying low as an assistant coach than a head coach. A position that requires talking with the media often. It was a little too much information but it at least shows that McDaniel is taking the job seriously, McDaniel and Tua Tagovailoa, the ultimate Belichick kryptonite, had a solid time moving the ball down the field against the Patriots. The Dolphins' offense posted 38.38 yards per drive, one of the top marks in the league, though they only got 13 points out of it. The defense helped out big time with a fumble recovery touchdown and a dominant performance against Mac Jones and company. The Dolphins are hoping that McDaniel can turn the offense into a great unit with Tagovailoa and numerous strong weapons around him, namely Tyreek Hill. He seems to have plenty of confidence in his young quarterback and it will likely only grow as he generates more chemistry with Hill, Jalen Waddell and the loaded Miami offense. Mike McDaniel's next test as an NFL head coach will be against the Baltimore Ravens. The Miami Dolphins are making a trip back to Baltimore and it has been quite a long time since they were last there. A place they haven't won it since the early 2000s, the last time the Dolphins played the Ravens in Baltimore was in 2017. Kiko Alonso knocked then-starting quarterback Joe Flacco out of the game on a hit that nearly cleared the benches, Miami lost that game 40-0, it was the second consecutive loss to the Ravens and in 2019, the Ravens would beat Miami 59-10. In 2016, the Ravens won 38-6. Needless to say, there is little love between the two teams. Miami's last win in Baltimore came in 2003 when Miami squeaked out a 9-6 win in overtime. Since then, Miami is 3-12 against the Ravens including a 22-10 win against the Ravens last season at Hard Rock. They lead the all-time series 10-7. The Ravens missed the playoffs last year but they look to rebound in 2022. They have a solid defense and improving offense that is built around Lamar Jackson, while Jackson has a big arm. His game is more predicated on his ability to escape the pocket and run with the football. The Ravens' offensive is geared toward a good running game that sets up the pass. It will be a hard-hitting trench game. This weekend, the onus for success will be on the Dolphins' defense yet again but Tua will need to stay sharp and keep his offense in the game. If he struggles, the defense is going to find it hard to keep the Ravens' offense from moving the ball and eating the clock. Baltimore's biggest weakness on offense may be their receiver group. They are banking on youth to fill the void created by the trade of Marquis Hollywood Brown. Last Sunday, the Ravens and Jackson were able to keep the Jets' defense guessing. Jackson had an opportunity to throw and make plays. Jackson threw for three touchdowns on the day going 17-30 for 213 yards and one interception. The Ravens ran the ball for 64 yards. If Miami can hold the Ravens' offense to similar numbers, they should be able to win the game. Defensively, the Ravens held the Jets to just nine points. Joe Flacco, starting for the injured Zach Wilson, threw 59 times completing only 37 passes for 309 yards with both an INT and a TD. New York was able to run for 83 yards. Corey Davis led all receivers with 77 yards so there is an opportunity for Tua and Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell to move the ball. For the Ravens, Miami will have to contend against the run and the top Baltimore receivers are Rashad Bateman who had two receptions for 59 yards, and Devin DuVernay who caught four passes for 54 yards. Mark Andrews will remain the top target in the Ravens' offense. Last week he posted five receptions for 52 yards averaging 10.4 per catch.